Hey everyone, hope you're having a good time. I am here today to talk about an incredible game called Rogue Flight. This video is not sponsored in any way. I've done a lot of videos lately talking about some of the games I've been looking forward to and some of the games that kind of went under the radar at Tokyo Game Show. And Rogue Flight was one of those games. It came out just a few days ago. I've been playing the crap out of it non-stop and I needed to do a review. Now, if you love Afterburner or Afterburner type games, I personally started playing Afterburner on the sketchy Tengen uh, NES version and I kind of fell in love immediately. But the game that really got me into the Afterburner series was Afterburner 2 on the Sega 32X, which was incredible. It just encapsulated the amount of speed and insanity that comes with flying a fighter jet in an arcade rail shooter game. And then the game that absolutely blew my mind was Afterburner Climax, and this game, Rogue Flight, somehow outdoes that one. If you enjoy top 10 videos, reviews, podcasts, all that good stuff, please remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications to all so you won't miss the next video. Now let's begin. If you never grew up with Sega and grew up more of a Nintendo kid, then you might know the rail shooter genre more under the... Star Fox moniker. So we got Star Fox and Star Fox 2 on the Super NES and of course Star Fox 64 on the N64 is probably the most popular one. That's the first one I played in that series. Now Star Fox is great, but if you want Star Fox turned up to 11, you play Afterburner Climax. And if you want Afterburner Climax turned up to 11, you better check out Rogue Flight. It's even on the Switch. It's about 20 bucks, 20 to 30 bucks, and it is incredible. It's got everything I loved from Afterburner Climax. You got that feeling of intense speed. You've got the smoothness of the fighter ship moving, dodging all the oncoming fire. The differences in this is you've got a combo meter, and if you can keep that combo meter up, you're constantly healing. Now, this is one of the greatest additions to the rail shooter genre in my opinion so you're constantly wanting to keep that combo meter maxed out or at least keep that white combo meter filled up or active because as you are shooting down enemies it's constantly rehealing your shields you might take a lot of damage but as long as you can keep your combos up and try to avoid taking too much damage you're going to continuously keep healing so you're not going to lose your lives right away like you do in some of the earlier afterburner games now you have three lives to get through the story there's a bunch of different branching routes when you play through the story, which makes the game's replayability awesome. The storytelling is really well done, inspired by like Macross and Gundam and Evangelion, stuff like that. So if you're an old school 90s, 80s anime fan, you're going to love the storytelling as well. The gameplay is so smooth, so crisp, so fast and so well done. You've got a plethora of different weapons to use. You even get like those Gradius style kind of objects that surround your ship and shoot with you they're called seraphs in this game as you play through the game you get access to more weaponry you get access to more seraphs uh, you get access to upgrades for your ship so you can increase the maneuverability of your ship there's a drift attack so basically if you hit the uh, r3 stick to the left or the right you do what's called like a drift it uses kind of like the jet stream from your wings as a whip that attacks all the enemies in front you if you can line that jet stream up when you're doing your drift attack it does massive damage to the enemies on stream the developers kind of call it like a melee attack almost it's almost yeah it works almost like a whip really out in front you got to line it up it does massive damage you get more points for hitting enemies with this and your points depending on how you're achieving your points they go to different tallies on the side after each mission and those determine what different upgrades you'll unlock so there's a tact session which determines all the different weapons their upgrades as well as your shield upgrades and then there's the ship itself upgrades which determines your maneuverability and all that you can also pick some that increase the amount of jet streams that come off of your wings i can't remember what the official word is in the game but basically it makes more of those whips shoot out and then you can do massive damage to a wider degree of enemies the boss fights are phenomenal the fact that there's different routes through the game makes it so like it, depending on how you play through the game there's a short route 
There's a little bit longer of a route. Both lead to kind of bad endings. But then there's the long route. Once you've played through the game a couple times, you've got the hang of things, you've got your ship upgraded a little bit more, you can take the the route that's a little bit longer. You kind of go through both, the, both of the two shorter routes together. And once you do that, you unlock New Game Plus. New Game Plus isn't just playing through the game again. You actually get different routes. The people on comms, they find better routes to accomplish your mission more successfully. So you're taking new routes through some of these planets and asteroid fields and stuff like that. Tons of replayability. In order to get the best ending, you definitely want to play through New Game Plus. And with New Game Plus, you get to keep all the weapons and upgrades that you would have unlocked in your previous playthroughs. They added a retro mode, which changes the music to kind of like Sega 32X 2D style music. And you also change the avatars of all the characters to like a retro 80s, 90s anime look, which I honestly prefer. Uh, some things I would change about the game, maybe to improve it, possibly something to add in like an update, is in Afterburner Climax, they had what I believe was called Climax Mode, and you could toggle on or off any of the ridiculous changes you wanted. So you could turn on like infinite lives, infinite missiles, and you could toggle them all on or off. Uh, you can toggle the speed at which you move, and stuff like this would just be incredible to add to the game. But other than that, like, Afterburn Climax has been my favorite rail shooter since the PS3 era. And a lot of times when you play a new game in a genre that you love, and there's like a number one game in that genre that you love, when you play the new game, it kind of sometimes makes you want to go back and play that previous game, so in this case, Afterburner Climax. And by playing Rogue Flight, it doesn't even make me want to go back and play Afterburner Climax. It makes me want to play more Rogue Flight. So, definitely check this game out. It's, dare I say, the best ever rail shooter I've ever played. And I love the genre. Like I said, I've been playing Afterburner since I was a little kid. This is the best of the bunch. If you like this genre of game, this is a 10 out of 10 game. There's nothing better on the market. Nothing better you'll find. Like I said, if you like afterburner if you like star fox if you like anything like that if you like space harrier for example check this game out it's incredible it will not let you down so much replayability so much ship customization and yeah check this one out highly recommend it anyways if you enjoyed this video please remember to like subscribe turn notifications to all so you don't miss the next one i've been streaming on twitch at twitch.tv slash dp03 i stream right here on youtube as well at least three nights per week Tune in, catch us live, and I will see you guys in the next one.